And this is going to go into Google Drive, YouTube, and then <laughs> share my ideas. This is going to go to YouTube. <laughs> this is going to go to YouTube, not Google Drive. But we'll have good But because you have a Google account, it, it all is is good. And then, then I'm going to show you, you know, toward the end, I'm going to show you how you embed this stuff into your angel course. Okay. Um, and, and, and get that done. Well, I don't know what that was. Uh, color color scheme. Scheme. Color scheme. Isn't that nice? <laughs> so I want to show you, and, and by the way, this, this, is, this is in Google Drive. And what I do in Google Drive is instead of me sharing this document and keep it unlisted, there's a thing in Google Drive called Publish to the Web. And I like this because it, 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 this is the URL that's in there. And if I just copy that, so this is what it looks like. So that's what I can send to students. So, so when I made changes, so I made changes this morning. I actually created a couple tutorials this morning. That's how crazy I am in the morning. Yeah. I am a morning person. Um, so I, once you add to this in Google Drive, it updates what's out on the web. This is a web page. Mm -hmm. So it, the students don't need any kind of login. There's, there's no issue in terms of, from my, from my experience, that if you did give them the Google Drive, you know, this, this URL, that even though I did uh, allow this to be seen by everyone, you know, I don't want them to see this stuff and all that. So I have this out there. And what's nice is that, you know, I can then put in these links to, to, these, to the sites. So I do want to show this, how to increase your limit on YouTube. So again, this is going to be out in our resources. And these are links to YouTube videos. So here's one of the other things that you should realize about, uh, about YouTube. Oops, didn't want to do that. There it is. One of the other things you should realize is that if you need to find a tutorial on something, go to YouTube, and, just, and I bet there's tutorials for it. Mm -hmm. So this is out there. That's, there's no voice to it. It just is showing you what you have to do. So if you could log into your Google Drive account, I'm going to step you through it because I already did this. So if you just go to Google.com or go to YouTube.com, I'm sorry. Go to YouTube.com and let me sign out. Right? And in right up here, now I'll do the whole thing. Right up there. When you get there, there should be a sign in. So you go ahead and, and push sign in. Right? Then you're gonna go ahead and sign into your account. By the way, when it says email. You do not have to put at gmail.com. Oh, I was going to ask you. That. If it is a Gmail account, so the reason it says email is because you do not have to have a Gmail account connected to Google. You could use your own. You could use any email account. But if you are, uh -huh. then you can just use your username and then your password. You don't have to type it in if it is a Gmail account. Okay. Did everybody get logged in? You got logged in, Sharon, or are you having frustrations? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Super Allen. Oh, that is so funny. Have you ever seen Eco Man? Oh, oh that's Eco Man. <laughs> that's <amazing. laughs> There's a story behind it. <laughs> I, 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 there's, a, there's a long story behind that. And so, and, and so I will tell you the long, I'll tell you the long story behind it in a, in a little bit. So once you come here, then what you need to do is click on, I know it sounds bizarre, but you push upload. Okay? And you see mine's not there. So when you push upload, at the bottom there should be a little statement that says, Want to, upload want to upload videos longer than 15 minutes? So what you and you click on that. Your limit. Yeah, increase your limit. Click on increase your limit. You're going to be asked to type put in your uh, your mobile number. Hopefully you have a mobile number and you don't care about texting. The reason that Google is doing this is because they want to make sure this is a real person and not just a computer Got doing it. it. You will get a text from Google with a code on it. You put that code in. This is a one-time thing. That's why mine doesn't show up anymore. 
one time thing. Area code. Yeah, you put your area code and your cell phone number. So then we need our cell phone number. You need your cell phone number. Yes. Oh, we need our cell phone. Yes. To find the code. Mm, yes. Because they're, they're going to send you a text. Yes. Do you want us to have that available now? Well, if you want to go ahead and just go ahead and do it, because what it will do, once you do that, it will ask you to verify. Oh, I don't have a phone. I so you don't have a phone? Okay. My, my wife, she'll, she'll verify it. Right. You can have, anybody who has a cell phone can verify it, so it's okay. I'm going to go ahead and, and pause us right now and continue the recording here. All right. So that is the way that you increase... That is how you increase your limit. So now you are on, you have unlimited time, so talk as much as you want. But keep in mind about the chunking and all that. But you know, the honest truth is, is that, that, that sometimes we've heard from students that they want to listen. They want to hear the whole thing, you know? I mean, it sounds interesting, and some students will. But still, so now you have how to increase your limit. So now I want to talk about uploading a video to YouTube. So mm -hmm. Yes, sir. The code, the code is just, the code is in a text to you that your wife If you if you want to call her later, yeah, yeah, and you, it'll bring up again. You'll say increase your limit. You may have to do that again, but and she'll go. She'll be going. Why do I have this text? <laughs> so uploading a video to YouTube is a real simple process. Uh, I'm in here. So when you come into YouTube, you're going to come in here. You click upload where we were before. So now you can drag and drop a file in right here. Now, uh, one of the things we did in the, in, the, in the online course is we asked you to go ahead and record with the webcam. Mm -hmm. That's something new and something very interesting and kind of cool that you can record right there with the webcam. Look at this. You can even create a slideshow if you want right, so, right inside of, of YouTube. Um, I'll talk about the video editor because there's video editing capabilities. Can you upload from, from the uh, app? Well, I'm going to talk about that because, so this is if you're online. So if you have an iPhone, and I'm not sure they even have it on the Android yet, which is bizarre, but I think they do. There is an app called YouTube, uh, Google Capture. Yeah, and I, I don't, I, I'm not projecting up there, but this, this app is phenomenal. So imagine from your student's perspective, and you want your students to do something, going on a field trip. And they happen to have an iPhone or an Android device. There is an app called Google Capture. So when I click or push on that, this will allow me right now, and I'll do it. I'm going to go ahead and take video. So I'm now taking video of you all. Look at you, how wonderful everybody is on a Saturday. We're doing great. Yeah. Yay! Hi. It's YouTube Capture, right? Yep. Okay. Google Capture. And I'm going to go ahead and stop it. Jesus. This is YouTube. When I stop it, it asks me to enter a title. So right from my phone, without really even, you know, there, there's ways of taking yeah. your video and pushing it and saying share and all that. But now this allows me to enter a title, uh, call it play, and I click upload. And it is uploading to YouTube in my YouTube account, whatever account I got connected to it. And one of the things that's interesting is that once you have stuff that's uploaded in here, um, I can actually, look, it's uploaded and it's finished. Once I push on it, I can now choose my settings, which I'm going to talk about, whether it's unlisted, public. I can tag it. Um, I can share it in Google Drive or Facebook or Twitter right from here. So right from my little phone, I just put a video up into YouTube. Now, again, and the other nice thing is that when you look at this app, there's a little folder in the lower right corner where it says back, but then um, where is it? I can, I'm trying to see if I can uh, you can you can get to your photo stream on it. I'm trying to remember how now. I thought this was right here. I don't have any photos. It would show all the photos in your photo in your in your photo stream. So any photos that you've taken, mm -hmm. they would be in here. So you can actually push those and push those up into YouTube. Oh. With even and there's and for the iPad too. Yeah. 
Yeah, it enables your camera roll, exactly. So it takes from your camera roll any videos that are on there and uploads it, yes. I have a question, I don't know if it's a dumb question. question. It's never a dumb question. I don't know now to ask it. Anytime is. If we make videos, like say for example the video that we made for our four week online portion of this class, and then we put them in a Dropbox. But say I wanted to make a video for a student and I gave the students the link, they don't have to have a Gmail account to be able to access that link? Correct. They can just click the link and no matter what, it will take them there. Mm -hmm. And then they only see that video or do they get to look around and see like how when she, like she pulled up your eco? <laughs> like well, that's can. her, that would be her account. So yes, I mean, they, they come to your video, but then they have all of the other stuff all around. So like they could see the video that I made for the Wix summer camp. Technically, they if, don't have that. If they subscribed account. to your account. Oh, okay. So if you if you subscribe to to the SPC IDT account, we, we're putting all of our videos in here. So all the videos that are connected to SPC YouTube account, that's Joe, Joe, that's all of these videos. I'll talk about video manager in a minute. But these are all the videos for we're you know, we're starting to put all of our tutorials and all of our stuff up into YouTube. So if you sent me a link to Paula Ralph's testimony you could then from subscribe. last summer, and I click on the link for Paula Ralph, I then have automatically. You can subscribe, and as, as long as she has them available to you, didn't put them as private, yes. Okay. So yes. we'll talk about that about. So, so one of the things to consider when you think about using YouTube is not use your personal account. Um, yeah. So you can create as many, well, no, that's not true anymore. Google got smart with this, but you can create a number of other Google accounts. So my suggestion to you, if you're going to be using this for your class, is to create an account that's specific. So for example, again, we have, and we, we have to use Joe IDT because we have to have a first name in there. So the SPC IDT account, we have that. But then I also have my personal uh, YouTube account over here where this is my personal stuff where I just play. I don't do a lot with that in YouTube, but, but I, I separate it. So if I'm going to do anything, if I'm doing anything for my work, it's going into the Joe SPC IDT account. So you really want to consider that and make sure you create an account that's separate. Because yes, you don't want, you know, well, the wild like, party no, that I your wasn't family was going to have the other day. Come on. I was just thinking, well, it, they'll click that link and that video that you want them to see automatically pops up. And then I was just wondering, like, let's say I made other videos about, I don't know, writing an essay or subject to verb agreement. Yes, they, they could subscribe. But if they don't subscribe, they only ever see that one video I sent them. Correct. Okay. Yes. But the idea of subscription is a good thing. Right, because then if I do have other videos, they can look at them. Right. And they would get a, they would get an email like once a week or whatever they choose in YouTube to I mean in their in their email account that says hey a new video is here for you here are your videos okay. so that's the things that are pushed to them so that's it's not a bad thing that, that they subscribe to it okay so that is what yes yes I'm sorry oh, yes. so am I automatically subscribed to the IDT on YouTube no okay so then I would have to make a separate account and then subscribe to directly to the IDT. One, so that I can. Uh, that is a good question. Because <laughs> I don't subscribe to stuff in YouTube. Well, actually, I do. And here's my subscriptions. So you go to subscriptions, and these are the ones that I've subscribed to. Settings? It's under this. So next to your little name here, mm -hmm. you'll see you have a YouTube. Yeah, because you automatically have a channel. You automatically have a channel. Your channel is your account. Mm -hmm. And then you can look at your subscriptions and you can subscribe. And I think if you go to any, so, so basically if I go to this, this YouTube video here, you'll see under here where it says subscribe. So this is how you would subscribe to somebody's YouTube video. So when, when you bring the video up, Amy, this is what somebody will see and they'll see all this other crap. And you always have to be careful about this other crap because if it's a controversial subject or if you're teaching anatomy and physiology and you happen to be talking yeah. about you know female reproduction you know that's that's the only downfall yeah. here is that you could offend unfortunately mm -hmm. but there's ways of embedding stuff and I'll show you all that I got trouble on a plane for that mm -hmm. and one of my apps on that was doing stuff for school and it's still like am I going to have to ask you for that <laughs> <laughs> I teach anatomy and she's like really? I'm sure you do yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I would just click on this, Alan? 
That's us. That's you. And now you're subscribed. Now you're subscribed. And then you can unsubscribe if you don't like the person. So, at the channel, and then what do I type IDT? Like, yeah, add channel. Yes. Okay, and then, and then you would do it. Uh, well, so you can search. So you it's it's SPCI. And go into your subscriptions. Yeah. It's month one. Oh, that's right. And now, in the right, you just see ID. Gotcha, gotcha. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. I went here first. Channel. I'm going to subscribe here. I'm going to subscribe to all of you. There you go. Thank you so much. And then, yes. here, I said Joe SPCI. Gotcha. All right. So now I want to show you, you know, that traditionally was what YouTube was. I upload my videos, people watch the videos, and that's the end. Google took it over, and Google has taken it to the most extreme that you could ever imagine. Um, because there's a number of reasons for, for, for having your stuff up there. Number one, you can actually edit your videos right inside of YouTube. There is a video manager, and I'm going to show you. They just added this piece, adding slow motion. But one of the other powerful, powerful, powerful things that you can do in YouTube is captioning. YouTube is automatically captioning your video. And you can then, and it's not going to be 100%. I'm going to show you that from one, one of the tutorials I did this morning. But you can then edit that. So you could spend the next 10, about 10 minutes going through and editing where the video is, and then you have it captioned so it's completely accessible. And then you also have it accessible on any mobile device because even though it's playing Flash here, it doesn't play Flash here. So it is completely accessible on any mobile device, which is very different from uploading videos to our video manager tool. Now again, it's not to say you shouldn't want some stuff on a video manager tool. If it's something that's really, 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 really private, you really don't want any anybody to see it, then think about you know keeping it within SPC. So let me show you, and again, these are links and tutorials. Um, and, and let me go ahead and uh, let me use my own account here. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, do a, a quick little webcam here. Because I want to show how this works in the webcam, which you should have gotten things. Hey, hi, everyone. Everyone's back there. I'm over here. I'm going to let it go for a few minutes here. And <laughs> really? Eco man. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. And then I'm going to go ahead and upload. So the first time you go and upload the recording, you're going to come to two pieces of information. You're going to become to two pieces of information, info and, and settings. The first piece of information is the title. And you really want to make sure that the title is something descriptive. This is the basic info, you know, my video. <laughs> um, you want to set the privacy settings, OK? So the privacy settings are real important. And this is another thing that happened with Google taking over. There used to be two privacy settings, private and public. And it was like, that wasn't good. Private meant that only 20 people could watch it. And private now means nobody can really see it. Um, public meant that it was completely out there. Anybody could search for it and anything like that. The best setting for you all, for your students, is unlisted. What unlisted is means, I got it, I got it. I can use Google Plus. Leave me alone. <laughs> what unlisted means is that anyone with the link can view it. But it is not searchable. So anybody that's out on YouTube searching for a video would never find this video. That's what unlisted is. And that's what's the best one. The private does not work if you want to make this available to your students. OK? So you put a title in, you put a description in, and then tags, which are not necessary if you're doing unlisted, because the tag idea, tags are kind of like keywords. So if somebody is searching, they can find it much quicker. There is, a, there is a second step once you upload the video that's real important, and that's the advanced settings. It's real important to go into the advanced settings because of this. It depends. For the most part, if you want to deliver your videos that you're doing to your students, you probably don't want them commenting on them. <laughs> 
You don't want them video commenting on them or anything like that. However, you know, and we did, we were going to try this with with you all in the online, but it just didn't work. Right? I mean, Tim and I tried this. It was like it was just a nightmare where we wanted to try to have the uh, the comments out there so that you can comment with each other. So you could do that where people, where students could have a discussion, and you could actually approve them so they can be moderated. But for the most part, you may want to literally shut these off. So you turn off allow comments, allow users to vote, allow users to rate, allow video responses. You do want to allow embedding and you want to notify subscribers because if your students subscribe to it, it's okay. In terms of the licensing, the standard license, and then if you, if you don't mind with the ability, and this is important, if you're going to share this with your colleagues, you want to choose Creative Commons Attribution. Creative Commons licensing, again, I don't know how familiar you all are with that, and I talked a little bit about it, but if you go do a search for it, you'll see that Creative Commons licensing was this intention and this idea by this Stanford uh, professor, law, uh, uh, which he's wonderful, Lessig, I think his name is? The lawyer. The lawyer. He's a lawyer, yeah. But he uh, go watch his, his videos and his presentations. They're phenomenal. Because what he talks about is, you know, when it comes to copyright, and I'm getting on a different bandwagon here, when it comes to copyright, as we've talked about it, um, is that the intention of copyright was not what Disney has made it, you know. The intention of copyright was for a certain period of years and then put it in the public domain and then let the public make it better. I mean, as he gave one example of this where um, veg Vegematic, you know, so if you've ever seen the infomercial with the guy with the Vegematic, you know, and so somebody took that, that infomercial and put it up in YouTube and, and remixed it to have like a, um, yeah, yeah. yeah, so you, you know what I'm talking about. And it, and it went, it like got two million, three million hits. The whole point that he was making with that was that that remix probably was the best marketing that this thing, I mean, yeah. you now know about Vegematic. So, <laughs> and they made it better. So anyway, that's the whole purpose of creative, that's what he created with Creative Commons licensing. And there's different levels. Again, the lowest level is attribution. So that if I share something with you, all I ask for you is that you say that I did it. And there's other levels of, of Creative Commons licensing where you can share and actually remix and reuse it. As long as, again, you give attribution, but you make it better. And that's the whole idea of Creative Commons licensing. The other, I, the other purpose of this, again, when I talked about Flickr, is that you can find Flickr images that are Creative Commons tagged, which means that they are free to for you to use in any course that you want. Mm -hmm. So. Is that what we need to use for students as well, or does that not matter? So we make a video and just try it on class. Again, if you want to share it, it, you know, I'm not sure it matters that much. But if you want to share it with others, or and maybe you go to a conference and say, hey, that video you did was really great, you know. And the other thing is, and because you kept it unlisted, this is not searchable but having at least having that Creative Commons license on it. Yeah. Uh, so make video statistics on the watch page public to visit. No, you don't want to do that. So this, this advanced settings is an important piece here. When, once you upload the video, once you upload the video, you're going to come to the basic information and then the advanced information. And then you go ahead and save the changes. What's captions? Oh, I'm getting to it. Okay. I'm getting to it. I'm getting to it. Getting to it. So that's the basis. So now I want to go into the video matter. I just want to go back to our things. So one of the things that you should know is that when you come to, uh, when, you, when you come and log in, your videos, it's going to kind of look like this. Things that are recommended for you and all that kind of crap. What you want to do is you, you click up here and you go down to your video manager. Okay, so the video manager is kind of your area where you can see all the videos that you've done, all the videos that are there. So this is the video that I just did here, and you can see this means that it's got Creative Commons license on it. And I'm, once I, I'm in here, I'm going to go ahead in, into, the, into the edit. When I go into the edit area, again, you're going to see I'm on the, the, the information and settings. Um, but now this is the video manager. So the first thing you get to do is to choose what, what thumbnail do you want to show when before it plays. Maybe I want to show something like that, which is really bad. <laughs> the middle one. The middle one. Yeah. 
Uh, it'll give you some of this, some of your statistics, and that's another thing you get with Google and with YouTube is you get all kinds of analytics and statistics. Who's looking at it? Who's at it? And also such a thing. Wouldn't worry about the category. That's the info and 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 settings. But you have so much more to do now. So now enhancements. Yes. Enhancements. What can you do? Hi, everyone. Everyone's back there. I'm so, over here. You talked about it being rainy or this or yeah. that. So you have some possibilities of things that you can do. Like number one, auto fix. So this is going to show you the original, and then it's going to show you, and it's going through the process. And it depends how long the, the video is. It'll show you the original. It'll show you a preview of what the new one will look like, so that you can let see. Let it go for a few minutes here. And so I don't know if that's better. I mean, it puts some color in there. It's auto fix. But I can click here and fine tune the lighting myself with whatever I want to do, right? That's one of the things I can do. I can also apply all kinds of weird looking things to it. You can make yourself black and white. I can revert back to the original. Uh, the other thing you can do is trim. This is your own video, so I can trim it. This is how we do iMovie. You know how you, you can do it on your iPhone, you know, mm -hmm. on your videos. Okay. No, thank you. Not an iMovie. You can do it. Do you know I, that? Okay. No, I didn't know I was having to try it. Bring up your phone and bring up the, the in the camera roll mm -hmm. and click a video. You'll see at the top. You can trim. Okay. So right here, I can trim my video very simply, very easily, and say done. But you can't. Beer. Beer. I'm gonna let it go. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little good. Now, now I gotta do it. That's yeah. Right. I do. Again, I can trim my, my that. I'm going to go ahead and refer. And then one of the things you can do is you can save this or save as. So you can so you can keep your original and then save it as another one. And again, it takes time for it to render, but you know it'll work. Let me revert back to the original again. The nice thing is getting to see this the, the choices here. Come on. It's going back. Everyone right back there. So you see, I trimmed it in that particular case. Um, again, one of the other things you can do is I can choose make it black and white. You can see the more academic. Yes. When you trim, yeah. mm -hmm. how do you know what you're trimming off? Oh, it shows you. At the bottom. Right. All right. So, I understand what you're saying. So I can trim the beginning or I can trim the so, end. So let's say everyone. at the beginning, you know, you, st you started your webcam and you went, Right. I can see, so you can see kind of thumbnails and things. But how do you know when you did that? Like what when you, you made that help? Right. Like what if you did it in the middle? How much time? Well, again, trimming, you, you, you can't split here. Like we're not editing per se. You're not, you can't split here. Okay. This is not like Camtasia where I can split it in the center, right? and then delete okay. out. So it's just the end. It's just the end. Okay. okay. Keep in mind. But but keep in mind that probably coming in the near future that will be in eventually. Eventually, I mean this is what okay. they do. Okay. Uh, my question is that mm -hmm. I'm, try, I, I, I'm trying to trim, but you see how the trim, um, how your picture it shows kind of like your, the timeline of your video, mm -hmm. so you can determine where to trim. This, I just have a blank canvas and I don't know why. Is this your video? Yeah. Like. There's something there. <laughs> you can't transfer. I think you can. You can. Yeah, I told you I'm a difficult girl. I think I can. Like, if you find something else. Well, I'm going to show you. Right. I'm going to show you how you can. I'm just going to show you how you can trim somebody else's video okay. toward the end. Okay. Yeah. These are video. Keep in mind, this is, these are videos that you own. Gotcha. So, this is. You can't do this with somebody else's video. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. okay. So additional features, blur faces. Yeah. Remember I said that. <laughs> so if you were doing a video of people, you could just click that button and it would blur the faces. Again, uh, wow, really? I can do that. Hi, everyone. Everyone's back there. Show us I'm getting there. All right, I just want to... I'm getting there. This is a really cool one, stabilize. You know how people go... So let me show you, actually, in here. Yeah. Stabilize. It'll make it easier for the viewer. 
uh, I'm going to go to my dashboard, my video manager. So there's your, there's the video that we had just did, right? And take video. So I'm now taking video. Wow, I'm are. getting seasick. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one I uploaded, right? So now I'm going to go into enhancements. I'm going to click this button. So this is the original video. So I'm now taking video. This is the preview. How wonderful everybody is on a Saturday with this great. It's not as shaky. Yes. It's on Google Cap. And I'm. I didn't see much difference, but. Uh, right. Well, maybe I didn't do it as much as shaky, but I've done some of these where it's it's been really. Oops. Uh, yeah, this is the one. So this was one that when I was doing. And now I'm recording. This is a webcam, and everybody is having a great time. Look at. Look at that. See, I say the same things. It's so stupid of me. <laughs> so now I'm going to click stabilize. So this was when I did this, this particular training. It has to render what it's saying. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's rendering because what it's allowing you to do According is to see. the webcam, and everybody is having a great yeah. time. Look at everybody. Yeah, it's much better. Yeah. And one of the things with this preview is if I go like this, so I can see oh, that's the original. Have you ever? That's the other thing that's really neat. It gives you that preview of what's of what's going on. That's by just clicking a button. Just click a button. So again, you know, this is not Final Cut Pro, people. This, this is not you know the the full blown you know editing capabilities, but it gives you enough stuff to make it really kind of neat and interesting of stuff that you can do. So you could have actually done a video on all of us instead of easily. <laughs> no. So yes, you could have on that. Listen, on enhancements, if, if my little mini lecture was a little bit boring, could click enhancements and all of a sudden it's more exciting. Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> you know, I bet if you emailed Google, they would work on, they would work on that. They, I, you know, they would work on that. <laughs> so the, I was talking to Karen, and uh, she said she used to read comic books like I did. And I was thinking, man, if I could put a lecture in there and then put bam or pow or something <laughs> like that to make it really. Yes, you can. Yes. Yes, you can. I will show you that in a minute. Uh, the audio piece is kind of interesting. Hi, everyone. So, so YouTube has put in some enhancements. <laughs> That was now this is this this is this again. This is new. I this I just saw because I haven't been in. So now they when, now you have this, you can actually then say, okay, favor the original audio. Hi everyone. So in other words, you can have your voice going and have a little bit of the audio. And now position the audio. This is brand new. This is brand new. This is brand new. I've never seen this is so cool. Hi everyone. So you can give yourself an introduction. And then the music goes yeah. This is new. This is new. So this again is how you know you 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 you, 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 you close your eyes and Google put something new in there. That's new. So you can have a set of these audio. You can have a set of these, and they give you these audio in here. I don't think you can upload your own, but you can search of 150,000 wow. tracks that are free. Let's just see if they really. Let's see how. Uh, no, this I don't. Not yet. I don't think you can create your own track yet. But but soon. But anyway. That's the audio. <laughs> you can have fun. But the, but the honest truth is, as much as we say, you know, we're, you know, we don't want to be K-12 and all that stuff, and you know, we're high reg, they love this stuff, and even adults love this stuff. So 
why not put it into your class? It also puts a personality in. Again, that's the, the difficult thing with an online class, is, as we were talking, Tim, is, is trying to fit your personality into your class, into an online class. This is what puts your personality into that. And I think the students truly appreciate that. And, I, and, and, you know, and from my experience in teaching K-12, one of the things that I always truly believe, and I think, I think it's not even a matter of K-12, it's higher ed, if, if the students respect you, they're going to they're gonna do everything they can for you, for the most part. There's still some that don't, you know. I still had some that called me names and, you know, whatever. And, and the, uh, of course, the risk is with this kind of enhancement is, you know. <laughs> they're always expected. <laughs> no, 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 no. I was going to say that, that it works, it flows, it's not, you know, happy, clappy Mesopotamia. It's like the students are going, what? Exactly. <laughs> Too cheesy. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. if it is an enhancement, then it's good. Economics. Mm, yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, as much as, as, as I can get it. <laughs> <laughs> so, moving, moving on. Put some hip hop yeah, Annotations. So, annotations. Again, this is all my, your videos. Annotations. Here's where you can add some annotations. A speech bubble, a note, a title, a spotlight, oh, a layer. Oh, speech bubble. Bam. So at a certain point, you can put a speech bubble in. I am Eagle Man. <laughs> and you can position that bubble. And you can see down here, this is a little timeline that tells me where, where, when it's going to go. And I, and I can then say, well, I only want it to go for that long. And you can see here, I can then change the, I have some other enhancements here, uh, change the color of it, change the size of it. Uh, the link is a misconception though. And I really, I, maybe this has changed, and I don't think it has. So the link is a misconception that you can link back to another video, a playlist, a channel. You can't link to a website. That's what's still missing, Google. <laughs> Did you email them? No, we need to. I don't know what a fundraiser project is. <laughs> um, but, but on the other hand, if you had another video, this would be a link to a video. So the link is a misconception one um, in that it's, it's, it's not going to a website, unfortunately. So that, that would be really nice. We want to see play. We want to see that clip play with the, with the cat. OK. <laughs> yeah, and so now you, get, you, can, you can get a preview of it, so right here. Back there, I'm over here. I'm gonna let it go for a few minutes here. And then you can add another enhancement. You know, so add a spotlight. You know, add a spotlight. Thank you. I know. I know. What can I say? Well, on that particular picture. And so we, you can then click here, and this takes you back, and you can edit those enhancements or these annotations. So you have all different kinds of things. So. If it's something you want to explain a little bit more here, put a whole note to it. And you can see how they show in there. And again, that's cool because then if you make the video, but you forgot to forgot say something, something. Yeah, you just yeah, exactly. So even yeah. if you like, forgot something, you can throw it in as yeah. text. Yeah. 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 Yeah
because it, it, it's already there. So here's a video. I did this, and I'll, I'll talk about it in a minute, about how to trim a video within your playlist. This is a video I did this morning. So I come into it, and I click on the captioning. So these are all your choices, the info and so on. And then I'll talk about sharing and all kinds of stuff. So I go to the CC, the closed captioning. And by default, and if it's a long video, if it's a long video, uh, it may take 24 hours for Google to transcribe it. The first time you come in there, it'll say it can't, it won't have anything in there. But there's going to be this automatic captions. So Google automatically captions this. And if I click on it, you'll see the list of captions. And so now what I do is I play it. And this is what takes a little bit of time if it's a long one. But let me tell you, for, for, you know, for students with disabilities, this takes care of it all. Because the other thing is, is that Google by itself is, is available for students with physical disabilities. And, and I believe even with, uh, with visual disabilities. So I want to show you. So what should be? So I, I don't want that. So I want to show you. So I, so I, I want to get rid of so. I want to show you. So I edit that. And I go on. How you can trim somebody else's. Show you how you can trim the video. Video that you don't know, you want to trim it. You want to read it. See how you want to, and you go in here and you want to trim it. See what I'm doing? Just going through. In other words, you want to make sure that the video is going to be uh, run for. So, a video is going to run for five. And again, I'm just going through. A minute or five minutes or something, even though it may be a long. Even though maybe it may be video. And this is really a nice feature to be able to uh, direct people to exactly what you want them to watch. Now, in order to do this, you have to use a playlist. To use a playlist. Get the idea? So you can get yeah. to go back and add in case they. Yeah, it's, 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 it's not it's, it's not going to be 100%, but it's not going to be so bad. And I don't have to sit there and transcribe everything. Right. And now I have this. When I go and save, I go and save and copy. So now what it does is it saves a copy. It's called English, which makes no sense. So this I would want to edit this, this name. Uh, yeah. Thank you. There it is. Add track name. So I want to call this, uh, you know, my CC, and I'll save the changes to that. So that's the the my CC here. So then what then what you do is you take the one that Google changed here and you disable it. The reason for that is that somebody who is disabled would only be able to see the C, the, the one that I created and not the automatic one. And it's transcribed. So let's see it then with the. Um, I. I the caption. Hmm? You were just saying you want right, to see it with the right, caption. With the caption. Yeah. yeah, so if I play it now. So I want to show you how you can uh, trim uh, somebody else's video. Video that you don't know, you, you want to trim it. In other words, you want to make sure that the video is going to be uh, run for a minute or five minutes or something, even though it may be a long video. And this is really a way to uh, direct people to exactly what you want them to watch. Now, in order to do this, you have to use a playlist. So I'm trying to create a playlist to watch the video that I just created. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, it's not 100%. So up here, so that's good. At least you got, you're not recognizing your voice. Yeah, completely. Yeah, and we all have voices. Yeah. The voices are different in how you talk, how fast you talk. But don't don't worry about it because again the beauty is that you can go in and edit. And I know that's a lot more work for you as an instructor, and we want our disability resource people to be able to do that. But the honest truth is, we have one person at this college, Mary Deschamps. She's phenomenal, who does a lot of the transcribing. But if you have the ability to do it yourself, we do it. Would you suggest if if you're producing some of these short videos for your online class? Regardless of whether you know there are students with, uh, you have to. Oh, okay. I will tell okay. you, yeah. by law, they have to be. Even if they're, even okay. if you, and this is the, this is the scary piece of our new uh, when we get a new LMS and we be able to do the videos in there and for our disabilities people, 
is that everything has to be captured, even if it's just to, not necessarily to an individual student, but if it's for all the students, even if it's something that's optional. Because then, even if it's optional, then the student who has hearing, you know, disability, they're, they're, they, don't, they have a disadvantage mm -hmm. because, you know, they don't have the opportunity to be able to, to, to have that, that choice. Mm -hmm. So the wall, they probably need that. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, and this is also works, again, if, you, if they have the CC on their mobile, it'll be up there. So I really, really encourage you, you know, to go ahead into the captions area. And again, I have, there's a tutorial. I think I have my tutorial on there. Page. Yeah, Try right here on, on, and so this, this shows you how to do the captions, you know, how to upload and how to do the captions, you know, within, within YouTube. So that person, somebody could just download the transcript. Um, no, no, you can download the transcript. That's another thing that you can do. So, so the other thing that's beautiful in here, right, is the ability on the active track here when I click into the track, you'll see where I can save, uh, where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it? Uh, original format. So I can download it as an SRT or original format, and you'll see it's an SB, SBV file, but SBV files are a captioning type of file, but it's just a text file. Mm -hmm. it's, you can just open it up in, in any kind of text editor. It'll open up. Uh, so it's that... This is why YouTube is just so phenomenal. And well, let me show you the last piece, which is trimming somebody else's video. <laughs> because, yes, I know while, while it's wonderful, I wanted to make sure that you also can see the, the reason that you may want to create your own original videos and put them up there for your students. You know, using your webcam, whatever. Again, they like to see you. So, and again, I have links and tutorials on this. So the first thing you have to do is create a playlist. Have you, anybody ever messed with a playlist, understand what a playlist is? Okay, so, so, you, so some of you did. So if you don't understand what a playlist is, essentially, yeah, well, no, it's, it's some videos that may be related to each other that you want to play from one to the next to the next to the next. So my favorite thing is, as always, is looking at cells. So I'm going to go in, cells. That's what I thought you said. <laughs> Not really. So I'm going to look. I'm doing a lesson on cells, and I want to find some videos. So the first thing I have to do is create a playlist. And so I'm going to go ahead. And it used to be, it used to be with a playlist, you'd have to go and create the playlist, give it a name, go find a video, copy the URL, and paste the URL in. Again, no too much work. So let's do uh, Bill Nye, the science guy on cells. <laughs> And so you find a video, you do a search, you find a video, you click the add to. You'll see the list of, of your, uh, these are the playlists that I already have. Or if I want to create a new playlist right here, cell lesson. And then you make a choice. Do I want to make the playlist public, unlisted, or private? Again, if it's for my class, I would like to make it unlisted. And then I create the playlist. And that automatically puts this video into my playlist. That's all there is to it. So then I go back to my search, and I go, well, I want to, oh, this has got to be a good one. Animal cells. I need something on animal cells. The city of animal cells. Crash course. And this is what you may get. And you have no control over that. This is an animal. And this is also an animal. Okay. Oh, I like this one. I go to add to. I click cell lesson, and that has been added to my playlist. Oof. So that's the first step in trimming somebody's video. But look, this is 11 minutes. 11 minutes. I don't want that. So the next step is you go to your video manager. And this is the important step. Because when you come into your, your account, you'll see playlists here. These are your playlists. These are all my playlists. So if I click on cell lesson, it will just, it'll play the first one, it'll get to the end, and it'll play the second one. Jeez. <laughs> but there's no way to trim it. So I go to my video manager, and in my video manager, there's playlists right here. 
And what I do is I click on Edit. So this now allows me to edit, and I have some basic information and some settings here where I can allow others to embed, maybe not. I can allow others. So again, these are just some CYA stuff for you. Hmm? No, I'm, I'm, I'm just following you. Are you on your video, video Madam? Did you click your playlist? So, I, so I see how this is going to No, you're not in the video manager. You're editing this. You're in your playlist. So go to that. You're in your video manager. But the 22 the the playlist under video manager public, public, public yeah. stays the same. Okay, that's right. that's I clicked on the video. I think it's right. It's right. It's right. 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 It automatically to the playlist. The list is Once you go to add to and you just click, you have your playlist, you click on it. And then you get this basic information and settings, okay? But here, you ready? Ready? Watch. This is because you look at this and you go, where do I trim? What? Where do I trim? Right here. I know. I know. It's really tiny and hidden. If you put your mouse over that, you'll see where it'll say adjust the start and end time of your video playlist. That's good. So now. This is somebody else's video. I'm not physically trimming their video, only in my playlist. And then what I yeah. And so what I do, uh, Louisiana, look at that. This, this, this is not showing down there too. Yeah. Wow, that's hmm. Could be Google. They're doing something new. So yeah, normally you can see where you're trimming. So you say, okay, I want those that amount of time, and then you save it. And then you do the same in this one. Oh, there you go. Could you do that more than once? Like, if you had a 40 minute video and there were two no. separate five minute chunks? No. So, what you would want to do in that case is add that yeah. video, second, the same video, to the, set to the playlist a second time. Yeah. yeah. And then trim that second one to a different time. Yeah. Okay? But here is the other really, really cool thing that happened with playlists <laughs> that I found out when I was doing this training a while ago. Because again, Google just says, this, I think, is really cool. So a playlist by itself, and providing that for the students, is like, whatever. Here's some videos to watch. But now, I can either with a uh, the text introduction, I wouldn't use. It's like a title. You can't, it's tough. To, you know, I thought you could maybe write a whole slew of text, but you can't. So really, it's best to introduce it and say, and start my recording. Come on. Ecoman. They're doing something, aren't they? Hey. So you could record from your webcam and, and give some context to this video and then upload that. And that becomes an introduction. Oh, that's why. There we go. That was why, because I had something up top there. Because I, if I'm showing a short video in my face-to-face, -face, I always give it a short introduction. Right. You've so give it the next video you're going to see is about cells. You really need to pay attention to the blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to spend too much time. And that gets uploaded, gets recorded, and becomes part of your playlist. And those introductions can be at the beginning of every single a new one. So when you provide this, this playlist to the student, they have your face introducing, giving context to what that video is and what they really need to pay attention to. Yeah. I love it. I yeah. think it's it's it, right. And then it's important to say done. When you're done, click on done, and the playlist is unlisted. It appears in the search, but anyone with the link can do. I don't care. I'm not here in the search. I don't want to be here. So. When you're showing that to the students, it doesn't just show your that particular playlist. You've got it in a particular order that you want them to. Oh yeah. Okay. But they'll but the playlist they'll get they'll be indexed so they can go between they can. Zip between videos. Okay. So, uh, are, Sharon, are you referring to actually having them get like access to your playlist for them to view the no, videos? No, no. I'm uploading it on Angel. Upload it on Angel so he can have that seamless process. So when you're having Watch. this, go, okay. okay. So that's the last step. Thank okay. you. Good segue. Okay. So last step in this, let me show you first if you 
want your own video, how I can get my own video in, or somebody else's video, if you want the whole video. So if I go back into here, and let's say I want this video um, into this, I go back actually to my video manager here, and I click on the video itself. When I click on the video itself, you'll see the about, the share, the add to. And by the way, this transcript is also very good because you see what this does? This is the CC that the students can watch and go through. That's just another cool thing. And I haven't showed you the analytics here, but there are analytics. I don't have any yet. But I'm going to click on share. So on the share, you could use this. And I would discourage you from using that because when a student clicks on that, they are... This, the student's attention is going to be drawn to whatever, and they click off of that. So if you click on embed, this is where you'll get embed code. And this is another important piece. So what used to happen with the embed is that we'd get to the end of the video, and it would be the end. Now, at the end of an embedded video, there'll be little plays, little suggestions popping up. And again, be careful. So once you click on embed, you uncheck this right here, show suggested videos when viewing when the video finishes. So in that case, they won't get any suggestions. Now, they can still click on the little YouTube link. There's no thing you can do about that and go to YouTube. But at least you're directing them to that. You can also choose some different sizes if you want. You know, be careful with making it too big. Because if you took the video in its, you know, with an older camera, it's going to look pixelated and all that. I mean, I just leave it like that. And I then copy this code. I'm going to go to Angel. Oops, I'm not on here. So it's similar to what you saw Karen do yesterday with, with VoiceThread. You go into the lessons, add content. A page is the best in this case. See, I can't spell. And again, the most important thing is clicking the source. That's the absolute key. Paste that in, save, and YouTube available to students within the class. And when we play it, and it gets to the end, because I unchecked, I don't have suggested videos. So anytime we share a YouTube video with the student, it's best to embed it? I, I would. Can we embed in it? Yes. You can embed anywhere the HTML editor is. You can embed it in, a, in an announcement. You can embed it in a Dropbox instructions. You can embed it. doesn't work. I tried, to, I tried multiple times to embed it in the email, and it strips it out for some reason. If I just wanted one student to see it, I could just create the team. Even using the old code? Uh, it's yeah. it's a lesson. Students are in lessons. Yeah. And, and All right, maybe not. In Angel. Okay. In our new learner management system. That's what we're going to start saying. Yeah. <laughs> so now. This is our frustration with Angel. We, I mean, I love Angel. been on a long time, but there's been a lot of frustration lately. Anyway, sorry. So now, like, let's say you have your intro to a video, right? Well, no, this is a video that you own or a video that you found that you yeah, just want to own. So it. let's talk about a playlist. Okay, so here's my playlist. <laughs> is that what you, no, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What I want what is that, want? let's say if I. I need to listen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm going to upload the video and I've created an intro like you have. And I want to upload both. Can it be within the oh, same page? I didn't show that. God. Damn. Damn me. So you added a link for this, right? Are you embedded or not? You went to Angel? And this, no. no, no. I embedded the code. Page. No. Right. What, I forgot, what I forgot to show was the ability to take multiple videos. Yes. So back to enhancements. Um, there it is. Back to enhancements. And it says, try out YouTube video editor. So let's say you made an introduction. He's making fun of me because, yeah, we have a connection about me writing down instructions. That's why. 
<laughs> Not a bad thing. So, 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 you, so you put up your original, uh -huh. and then you made it a, a video introduction mm -hmm. of, of, of that, and you want to combine those. Mm -hmm. Or even if I trim somebody else's video, and I want to combine them, am I able to do that? Well, that's what your playlist does. Yeah. Okay. The playlist is a combination of all of those. But I want to upload that combination. Angel. That's I was going to show that. That's the playlist. But what I didn't show was that if you own a video, uh -huh. so I have this, and I want to now introduce it. So I do a, a second video where I introduce it, mm -hmm. and then I come into the video manager on the video that I want, and then go to enhancements, and then I click this where it says try YouTube video editor. And now with the YouTube video editor, I then have, this is what Karen did, as you see, I have multiple videos that all the videos that I have and I can drag them down here and combine them. And then I can trim them out, the ones that I want, That's from top to bottom, and drag some audio to it, and then publish that. And you'll notice that there's a lot of there's transitions I can put in here. Uh, there's Creative Commons. I can add photos if I want. I can put a, a, a banner. You know, a, So in other words, this becomes kind of like a little Camtasia, but right within YouTube of the YouTube videos that you own. These are ones that you own. Only the ones I own. Only the ones that you own. Okay. Again, let me go back. So now, if I want to get the playlists, okay, the playlist that I want, I go into my playlists here. I don't care. I didn't want that. Oh, I did. I'm sorry. Is that what I clicked on? So I go into my playlist, and I can't remember where. I'm sorry, I went in the wrong place. I have two different accounts going up. Here's my playlist. So this is uh, this is the cell lessons. This is the one that I created with an introduction. So there's that, and you can see how the students can can index that. I go to share. Again, I go to embed. And I disabled that by being stupid. <laughs> Don't disable that. Sorry. Uh, playlist. Edit. Uh, there we go. I have to. Don't uncheck that. Oh. Okay. Me bad. <sighs> no, I don't know who has it. I know. I'm sorry. I know, and I'm going long. So I go into the playlist, and there's my introduction. I go to share. I go to embed. There's the embed. I copy that. Do you embed on the same page? Yeah. Of course. You can embed as many videos as you want, Then, but then the scrolling and all that. Paste that in, and now I have a playlist video. The thing the students oh, don't get is the index. Oh, but it tells them how many videos they have to watch. Yep. So, so they can do a new window. Blah, 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 blah. Well, you can just open this up, right? This now, notice this is what's trimmed. Millions of them. They can go to full screen. Yep. Okay. Any time you can have something inside of me. Yes. The more that you point to uh, to other things, it's confusing. Like if there, if there was text and it said, "Please click on this link to watch the video," a lot of people just won't click on it. Yeah, they they want to see it right there. No, but I thought that you said to you, you know when you put something in to have it open in another window. Yeah, that that's irrelevant for this. Now, if the video was huge and Alan wanted it to be this huge thing where the angel real estate took it up, right. then maybe that would make sense. But because it's small and he can enlarge it right from within here, yeah. it doesn't really okay. matter. Okay. When you have a playlist and it's embedded, this is new too. Did you know this? I just looked at this. this. So the student can, can again, oh, that's where you see the videos. they can see the videos. So, so you know, it's one of those things again where it, a little instruction the first time for a student if you're going to be using the playlist. You know, to have have a little video tutorial using using Jing at the beginning and saying, you know, if you push this, you know, that's going to allow you to see the videos in the playlist that I want you to watch. I'm going to be introducing these videos. You know, 
yada, yada, yada. And so on. Yes? One last minor detail. No, there is none. I'm saying it in my mind. Uh, now, when you selected your playlist, and but you when you opened the cell video, right, before you um, modified it or made any edits, and then within that video, while it's still open up, then you created the introduction within that same page Correct. so that it follows that format. Okay, that's all I wanted to have clear yeah. in my head. I'm good. Thank you. The, the key is creating a playlist. Mm -hmm. The key is adding videos that you find to a playlist. And you don't have to have multiple videos. If it's only one video that you want them to watch and it's only three minutes of that video, you create a playlist with the one video. But oh, once I, you create I, that playlist, you can trim their, anybody else's yeah. video. And that is the beauty. That is very, very important because again, you know, it, the person may have made just a good point for one minute. And that one minute is really going to get the students what they need as opposed to them, you know, you sitting there at the, uh, you know, the three minute and 15 second mark, and, go yeah, look at the video. And they need to understand why it's important too, because they're not going to watch it. Exactly. I mean, exactly. Yes. Having your face yeah, in there, relevant. explaining uh -huh. it, making it relevant is so yes. important. And again, more personal and more personal. You have me on cloud nine. I don't <laughs> like icing, but this is better than icing. <laughs> Okay, I'm just, I'm just. Well, we saved the there. best for last. Right? The best <laughs> whole time. No, I mean, it, it, it really, again, it, it, YouTube has you changed so, so much. And again, oh, I, and I didn't show the slow motion. Oh, oh you can use my video for that one. I forgot to show, <laughs> you know. <laughs> that was, again, what one of the other, the new things that they added was, you know, in your upload. So you go to your, your videos. And I'm going to go to edit here. And again, it's under enhancements. And you go to this little turtle right here. And so this is the slow motion. This is the original. You know, the students probably do that. Voice, yeah. Make fun. Yeah. However, <laughs> when it, maybe maybe when you it's some procedure that you want them and maybe there isn't a lot of talking hopefully, right. but you want it to, to see the, the little thing, yeah. You know, it's a little small because you know necessary. doing it at normal speed sometimes could be, mm -hmm. but if they could slow it down, certainly I can see I can see and so many things. If you're putting in sutures, go <laughs> through the yeah. skin like this. Yeah, and so you have a choice of what what speed you want it to be. And then again, you get. <laughs> and again, what's nice is you get the original and the preview, so you can see what it looks like side to side. So again, uh, this just came in about a month ago. It's about a month ago. Can you find this by way of just clicking on these new icons? Anyway. Uh, how do we find it? How do we find it? Tim, Tim and I are ones, I don't know about the other IDPs, but I subscribe to okay. approximately 50, 60 blogs okay. and part of my morning ritual is to read the new one is is well Google Reader is going away but I found a new reader is it, no it, it's it's a reader so I it, it, it's my subscription so stuff is pushed to me so in the morning I go through the list of stuff and I you know it gives me a quick scan and I just keep going oh, I don't want to read that don't oh that one I'm gonna read I click on it and I look at it and that's and I know that Tim does the same thing and it's just the, so so this was one on, on a blog and I was like, oh wow, really? And then I go to Google, then I go to Google, I go to YouTube, and I, and I try it out. Again, that's our job. That's that's what we are supposed to do. We are trying. We're, you know, your job is to teach and to be good, you know, content experts. You know, we can't stress that enough. And and for you to think that you should take the time and energy to do that is ridiculous. You know, plus you may not be as in, well, I was going to say you may not be as interested. As we are, I mean, for me, it's like, wow, really? That's cool. I didn't know that that does that. So, that's that's how I discover things. I know that's yeah, how Tim discovers. We're, we're the type of people that new update comes out, we install it right away. Who cares if it breaks something? We'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's the type of personality we are. So right. yeah, let's break it. Let's yeah, see that's the way we are. Yeah. That's yeah. why I went into the field I did, and you know, and 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 so you, you do. No, no. no. I, I like my, no, that I don't do. I don't believe in that. You always have to evaluate the value of something. For me, there's not a, a big return. They consider it good, and they just not that. Okay. Yeah. No, the one time my son did it. Mm -hmm. okay. 
Okay, let me let me stop the video. <laughs> I just did.